Are you in the market for a brand new laptop? Then congratulations, you're in the right place. As in this video, we're gonna go through everything you need to know about buying a laptop. Maybe you're after something specifically for gaming. Maybe you want something for work. Maybe you want something that does everything. We're gonna go through in this video everything that you should look out for, all of the pros and the cons of different sorts of price points, different sizes, touchscreen, non-screen, windows, all of that stuff. So if you're interested, get subscribed and get watching. But first, a quick word from this video's sponsor. ASUS and the incredible Christmas in July holiday sale. If you're in the market for some PC gaming goodies, then ASUS has you covered. With huge discounts available on laptops, monitors, peripherals, components, and much, much more. Not only that, but with cashback offers and a free copy of Dying Light 1 and 2 with selected bundles, there's never been a better time to upgrade your setup. Save big with the link down below, but hurry, offers end soon. I think the most important thing that you really do need to know is that everyone is different and you are unique. So your needs are gonna completely differ to what Sally up the street needs, for instance. So just buying a laptop that's recommended to you without really thinking about what you're going to be using it for could actually be literally quite a costly mistake. So we're gonna start this video by talking about a few of the different types. This is perhaps one of the more unique laptops that we have here. This is called the Samsung Book S, as I struggle to open it. And this is a Windows laptop. All of these are Windows laptops in front of me, but this is designed for maximum portability. I mean, if you look at the size of this thing, you can see that it is is very thin and light. I mean, I think I can quite literally pick this up with just a finger and a thumb. And this is designed for portability above all else. So if you want something that is gonna fit in your bag and you're not really gonna notice that it's there, you don't need something that's all about power, you're just doing emails, word processing, pretty basic tasks, this is the sort of thing that you should consider looking at. If you want something that's a little bit more of a jack of all trades type laptop, then this is granted a very expensive option, but this is one of the best I've come across so far. This is Huawei's MateBook X Pro. And full disclosure, this was actually sent out for a separate sponsored video that you should see very shortly. And I think for most people, this could be the ideal do-it-all machine. And the thing that stands out to me about this, not only is like the better build quality that you're gonna get with a more expensive laptop, but it's all about the screen. And I think a lot of people forget that when you're buying a laptop, you're gonna be looking at this screen for years and years. So you want something that is ideally quite high resolution, something that has a high quality IPS panel, and if you're that way inclined, maybe a touchscreen. And I didn't think that I particularly use touchscreens that often, but actually swapping to a few different machines, I found myself constantly touching the screen and going, oh yeah, this actually isn't a touchscreen. Um, which is quite annoying. But the thing that I really don't like about touchscreens is the fact that they have this horrible glossy panel. Look, there you go, you can see that. It's, I know it's worse in this room because I have a load of studio lights and things, but if you're someone that wants to use a laptop outside quite a lot, do bear in mind that having a touchscreen laptop could actually be quite a costly mistake because you'll find that it gets a whole lot harder to actually use your laptop anywhere that's actually quite brightly lit. Which brings us on quite nicely to Dell's XPS 13. And you can see immediately that it does reflect a little bit, but no way near as much as the Huawei machine. And that's because this does actually have a matte coating on it. It's not a touchscreen. This is the laptop I was talking about earlier. It has face unlock, by the way, if you hadn't noticed that. And a lot of Windows laptops also have this fingerprint sensor that you can get in the keyboard. Some have just the fingerprint, some have face unlock, some have both. This is a primary example of a laptop I think is really good, but it's not quite right for me, which is why I say it's important to know what you're going to use a laptop for, because this is very thin and light, but it is still very powerful. But for me, I prefer to have a touch screen. I prefer to have a little bit more screen. You'll probably notice this is a little bit shallower. If I compare this to the Huawei, you can see while this is smaller in footprint, you do miss out a little bit in terms of having a bit less screen. So you've got to sort of balance portability with practicality, I guess. But this feels lovely. I think this is one of the main things that you're not really going to get across, I guess, from a, like a YouTube video. And if you go into a store, you really start to notice. 
one of the things that you do get when you spend more money is a better level of build quality. Something that is really important though that you need to be aware of if you're looking at a thinner laptop like the Dell XPS is that you're probably looking at USB-C only when it comes to ports, which is good in the sense that the charger that comes with this laptop charges the laptop ridiculously quick and you can use this to charge your Android phone as well. You only need to take one charger with you, it cuts down on weight even further, but you're probably gonna need to carry some adapters with you to be able to use traditional devices. But the problem really with all of these slimmer laptops is that the slimmer you go, the less powerful components you can actually fit inside. This is my personal laptop and the one that I think is most suited for me. It is a convertible laptop, so you can actually take the screen off entirely. Well, that's a cool little party trick, isn't it? People think you've broken your laptop, but actually you're just being super clever. But you'll notice it is a little bit thicker, or I say a little bit, it's a fair wad thicker than the Dell XPS. So bearing in mind these are both 13 inch laptops, you can see there's a considerable difference there, and this weighs a lot more to boot as well. The benefit of this is that you can actually get more powerful hardware inside this. This still isn't the most powerful thing in the world, but I have done video editing on this thing on the go, and they do do a larger 15 inch version as well, which like all 15 inch laptops can get even more powerful hardware inside them. So you get better processors, you can even get six core processors in larger 15 and 17 inch laptops, which is pretty cool. If you're watching this video, ask yourself what your use case is for your laptop. I'd wager that most people just need something for general tasks, maybe a bit of software that work is gonna give them. If you're doing photo editing, that you need something actually probably like this, that's like mid-range in terms of power. But if you wanna be playing games or you really wanna be doing some heavy stuff like maybe some CAD design or anything like that, then you need to be buying something that is appropriate, even if that means saving up a little bit longer and spending a bit more money to be able to actually get the job done. But the reason I keep coming back to the Surface Book is because the keyboard on this thing is just glorious. It's one of the few ones that actually has a lot of travel because you have a bit of a thicker design, you can actually get more travel on the keyboard. And I find that it's nicer to type on and make less mistakes. And something that's super thin and light like this Samsung Book S, it's great that it's thin and it's super portable, but I don't think it's particularly nice to type on. Which leads us on to the final type of laptop really, which is this big heavy thing. Picking it up with a couple of fingers and a thumb is not very comfortable. I think this is just over two kilos. This is the gaming laptop I've had my possession for quite a long time now. We're talking about three years or so. I have won some PUBG games on this, that I can guarantee. And the reason you want to go for a gaming laptop is because primarily you probably want to play games, but actually drilling down a little bit deeper, it's because you want something that is more powerful. And laptops like this, they're not even necessarily that much more expensive because they're usually a bit cheaper when it comes to build quality. They use a bit more plastics. The screen might not be quite as nice, but fundamentally they've got more powerful components inside and they do produce more heat and the components themselves are bigger, which is why they're quite thick. You can see this is a bit, bit of a hefty geezer. Battery life on something like this, I mean, there's no other word for it, abysmal. You can get crossovers, which are pretty cool. But in terms of purebred gaming laptops, you're not really gonna be using this as a dedicated laptop for very long, so to speak. And because it is very heavy, putting it in a bag and taking it with you everywhere you go, you're not gonna have the best time. It's certainly doable, but if you're not gonna be playing games, it's sort of pointless to get yourself a gaming laptop unless you need the power for something else. If you're going to buy a laptop then, the secret really is to work out exactly what sort of laptop it is that you need, and then start picking from the options in that sector. I see so many people just going for the cheapest thing that they can find, without really thinking about what a laptop needs to be for them. If you can pin down exactly what it is that you require, then set aside a budget to play with, you've actually already thinned your choices down to just a handful of options. It's then that you can choose the one that matches your style, offers the best value, performance, screen quality, keyboard, trackpad, battery, all of those things. At the end of the day, it's all about knowing exactly what it is you need, rather than listening to endless marketing noise of companies telling you exactly what it is that they want you to think that you need. 
So then, this has been the Laptop Buyer's Guide 2020. I really hope it's been useful. If it has, please smash that like button. It helps out so much you wouldn't believe. If you do want to check out my recommendations of different laptops in the different sectors at different price points, you can find those all linked down below with my Amazon affiliate links. And of course, while you're down there, don't miss out on the ASUS Christmas and July holiday sale. Not only are there cashback and game bundle deals, but you can grab an X570 motherboard for only £170, a Quad HD ultra-wide 100Hz monitor for £530, and then the super smart Ryu liquid cooler for £145. Pounds. So many deals, such little time. Check them out today with the link down below. Let me know your thoughts though, I'd be really interested to hear from you. What laptop are you using? What laptop do you recommend to other people? And of course get subscribed for more videos just like this. Thank you so much for checking it out, I really appreciate it. I'll see you in the next one.